Hey, it's Pastor Danny. And again, I just want to encourage you as you're part of this group and so grateful that you found a group to where you're connecting with God and with other people. I just can't tell you the value of being part of community. Uh, God never in intended for us to do life alone. And Karen and I, we've, we're part of a group that meets on Wednesday evenings. And we love our group, love the people in our group. And I'm so glad that you're part of a group at Grace City as well. Again, whether you come to our church or not, uh, you may be part of a group and you don't even come to Grace City. And uh, we're hopefully you're part of a church uh, somewhere. But if not, of course, we always welcome you to join us at Grace City. Well, we are continuing our series, Ever Wonder Why? And this is a big one. Ever Wonder Why? God didn't answer the prayer in the way that you'd hoped for or the way that you prayed for. And that can be frustrating. I talked about how maybe you can use one word to describe prayer, describe your prayer life. And one of the words that you may have come up with or one that you would think of is, is frustration. You're just frustrated over your prayer life. It could be because you feel like you're not praying enough. It could be frustration over that you've been, you'd been praying for something and God didn't answer that prayer. And uh, so why, God, have you ever wondered why, God, did you not answer the prayer that I was praying? Well, Scripture has a lot to say about it, and I just want to recap the four points that we talked about on Sunday. Because prayer is something that God definitely wants us to be about. Um, it's important. It's a huge part of a believer's life. Uh, the disciples, they knew how important prayer was because they asked Jesus, Lord, teach us to pray. But prayer can be confusing, uh, prayer can be complicated, and sometimes it is hard to, to figure out or even understand. It's like, God, what are you up to? So here are four things that I believe Scripture does teach us of why maybe God didn't answer the prayer that you were praying. And the first one is this. The first one is that maybe you have a broken relationship. Relationships are very important to God. Our relationship with Him and our relationship with with others. And that's why it says in Mark chapter 11, verses 24 and 25, we're not just looking at one verse, we're looking at all the verses surrounding that one verse, trying to understand the context, the culture, and the, the characters, the people involved. We talked about how you can't just look at one verse and base your theology around one verse. You got to use scripture to interpret scripture. So Mark chapter 11, verses 24 and 25 said this, it says, I tell you, you can pray for anything. And if you believe that you've received it, it will be yours. But when you are praying first, forgive anyone you're holding a grudge against so that your Father in heaven will forgive your sins too. It's very clear. It's very direct. God's word says when you're praying, you can start praying. But as you're praying first, you need to go get that relationship right. You need to seek that person's forgiveness. And uh, because relationships are important to God. In fact, broken relationships, uh, fractured relationships can hinder our prayer life. The second reason that maybe your prayer didn't get answered is because of this. Maybe it didn't get answered because you have the wrong motive. And so many times I can find myself in my prayers being very self-centered. It's all about me and not all about God. And really, when we focus in on our motives, we're very selfish. I mean, we want the things when we want it, in our time, in our way, so it makes our life more comfortable, makes our life more easy, it advances our life, it gets everything that we want, we gain everything, and, and so we can pray, pray very selfish prayers. But really, what God tells us to do and commands us to do is to check our motives. That's why James, Jesus' half-brother, said this in James chapter 4, verse 3. You think he ever prayed some selfish prayers? Maybe it sounds like it because he knew how to write this. He said in James chapter 4, verse 3, and even when you ask, you don't get it because your motives are all wrong. You want only what will give you pleasure. So we've got to check our motives in our prayers. And then thirdly, another reason why maybe our prayers didn't get answered is that when you prayed, you didn't believe that God would actually do it. And I was very vulnerable with you on Sunday uh, because that's where I find myself many times, praying for people who have really huge needs, big needs. It's not that I don't believe we have a big God, but it's like, I want to pray for this. And if I'm praying with someone and asking God to heal them or, 
or to help them through a time in their life that's just in a crisis, man, I want God to answer that prayer. And I almost want it more for me, I hate to admit it, than maybe even for that, that person, because I want that person to know that I prayed for you and God answered my prayer that I was praying for you. And so sometimes we, we have to you know, check our unbelief as we're praying and lifting these needs up to God. And uh, there's that great verse, you can look at it maybe as a group in Mark chapter 9, where the disciples tried to heal the boy who was demon-possessed, and they couldn't do it. And so Jesus comes up on that, and he's kind of like, what's going on? And the father says, my son has, is demon-possessed. Uh, basically, your guys couldn't do it. Uh, would you please heal my boy if you can? And Jesus says in Mark chapter 9, verse 23, what do you mean, if I can? Anything is possible if a person believes. And then in verse 24, I love what the Father said because it just resonates with me. He said, uh, he cried out, it says, I do believe, but help me overcome my unbelief. That's not a bad prayer to pray, to ask God to help you overcome your unbelief. Listen, there's a reason why faith requires faith. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it's it's a journey. It is it is a step of faith in that we live our life as believers, as followers of Christ. We live our life through faith in Jesus, not knowing what tomorrow is going to bring, but believing and trusting that He's got us and He's going to see us through. And it kind of leads to to our last point of why maybe your prayer didn't get answered. Maybe it didn't get answered because God has something different. Now, to me, this could potentially be the hardest one because we are praying specifically. We're praying earnestly. We could be praying faithfully, yet God still didn't answer our prayer. And that's when we wonder why. God, why didn't you answer the, my prayer in the way that I was praying it? Is it something I did? Did I not pray hard enough? Did I not have enough faith? And the reality is, is that God's ways are higher than our ways. And that's what it says in the scripture passage of 2 Corinthians, or actually, I'm sorry, Isaiah chapter 55. Isaiah chapter 55, verses 8 and 9. And this is God speaking. He says, my thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord. And my ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than than your ways, and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. That tells us right there that God is God. We are not. He sees things that we don't see. His ways are higher than our ways. Whatever we think we need, God knows what we truly need. Whatever we think is good, God knows what's best for us. And that's where it is a, a, a journey of faith in our relationship with Christ and trusting God in all things. So listen, enjoy as a group discussing this spiritual dis discipline that is so crucial in our lives because I do believe that prayer changes everything. We got to remember that the relationship with Christ is more important than our request. We got to remember what we may not understand today doesn't mean that God's not going to take care of it tomorrow. What we got to understand, it's not so much in the what we are praying for, but in the who that we're praying to. Enjoy your group time, have some great discussions, and keep praying for one another.